In today's instalment of Teach the Class, we will be looking at the findings in the UK case of Ladbroke Football versus William Hill Football 1964 in the House of Lords in relation to substantial part for infringement. First off, let's look at the facts of the case. William Hill was a well-established UK bookmaker who since the 1950s offered fixed odds on football matches. They would send out a coupon to their clients each week, which contained 16 lists related to the matches to be played that weekend. These lists contained a header with a title, a variety of wages at stated odds, and explanatory notes. The lists contained a variety of 148 wager options, with a huge range of odds on offer in relation to wins, goals scored, and picking the amount of home victories amongst others. Ladbroke were also a popular bookmaker in the UK, and entered into the fixed odds football betting market in 1959. In the lead up to the 1960 English Football League season, Ladbroke released their latest coupon, in total, 15 of the 16 lists William Hill produced had been arranged in the same order, with the same headings, almost identical varieties of wages, and similar explanatory notes by Ladbroke. The odds on their coupons differed, however, as they would have had to have been calculated individually to publish them on time. William Hill claimed Ladbroke had infringed copyright they held in the coupon under Section 2.1 of the Copyright Act UK 1956 as an original work. Ladbroke's defence was that they were entitled to use a good idea by William Hill, and that they had merely copied a few individual parts of William Hill's coupon, and not a substantial part. The House of Lords first had to decide whether the football coupon could be considered a work under Section 2.1. The football coupon was essentially a compilation of an assortment of wages and football matches on that weekend. Compilations were considered an original literary work under Section 48.1 of the Copyright Act. Next, the House of Lords had to decide whether the coupon was original. Ladbroke argued the coupon lacked the requisite originality required. The House of Lords disagreed with this view. Lord Pearce, in particular, acknowledged that while it is difficult to find originality in an industry where many coupons share similarities, the William Hill coupon had individuality in the marketplace, which Ladbroke attempted to replicate. It was also found that William Hill had demonstrated skill, judgement and experience in devising these coupons. With these points established, it was clear that William Hill had a right under Section 2.5 to exclusively reproduce their work how they saw fit. The final issue came down to whether Ladbroke had reproduced a substantial part of the coupon. Lord Reed best described the test used by the House of Lords at 469, in which he states, Reproduction means copying. If he does copy, the question is whether he has copied a substantial part, and that depends much more on the quality than on the quantity of what he has taken. While a lot of work went into devising the individual odds on the coupon, which Ladbroke had not copied, it came down to whether the quality of the layout of the coupon was substantial in comparison to that work. Essentially, William Hill's success in the fixed odds marketplace can be attributed to the layout of their coupon. The layout had appealed to the customers enough to ensure they would be induced to place wages on the William Hill coupon rather than their rivals, which was a determining factor in whether it was substantial. The House of Lords referenced Peterson Jay in University of London versus University Tutorial Press 1916, in which he stated, What is worth copying is prima facie worth protecting. The House of Lords unanimously found that the layout of the coupon had figured to be a substantial part of the copyright, and thus William Hill's copyright was infringed. In conclusion, two main findings can be taken from this case. First, you cannot look at the individual parts of the copyright, but rather the work as a whole. And secondly, it is the quality, rather than the quantity, that must be considered when looking at a substantial part of the copyright.